We trained a model with Vertex AI for image classification, and we went through that process in the Google Cloud platform, including taking a look at the model, figuring out maybe where some of the issues were, and doing some basic evaluation on that model. So now that we've spent some time looking at models in BigQuery, and we've looked at some models in Vertex AI, we can start thinking more about this AI development process, because at the end of the day, we're not really trying to focus on just building a machine learning model. We're trying to build an application with, with machine learning models. So if you look at the overall process, there are a lot of steps and they tend to be somewhat linear to start. You know, you, you look at data ingestion and you think about where is the data coming from and what does the process look like to shape that data, to transform that data, to really engineer the features that I need. You also have to think about the, the preparation of your data and, and what that looks like. And you have to think about how you're going to understand that data. Anytime you start a new project, it's all going to be new. So you don't know what is the range of the data? What, you know, how is it distributed? Uh, what are, the, what are the, the consistent things that you see in the data? What has to be fixed? So these first couple of steps really involve just taking a look at the data, bringing the data into your system, preparing it, and understanding what's there. Then after you've done that and your data is somewhat good, you have to think about how you're going to train a model and what that model is going to be, what the purpose of the model is. But once you've trained a model, it's not done there either. You have to start thinking about how you evaluate that model. What does that model really look like? How does it? How accurate are its predictions? Are the predictions even good? What do we need for a good prediction? And that can change pretty dramatically. You know, if you're uh, predicting in a in a vehicle when the automatic braking should kick in, that should really be pretty close to 100% accurate. Accurate. Whereas if you're predicting, uh, you know, like who, which recommendations you can show for a connection on a social network, maybe that doesn't have to be as accurate. The cost of that accuracy is, you know, or the the, the value of that accuracy is maybe not quite as high in that situation. Um, and then you can think about how you're going to deploy that model and actually use it in production. But in reality, uh, this process has lots of loops. So you might start off in data ingestion and get to preparation and then understand data, then realize you have to modify that data again and then go back to the beginning and then prepare it and understand it. Maybe you get as far as training before you realize, oh, there's certain things we have to change in the preparation of the data. Uh, maybe you get as far as evaluating the model and find that it operates very effectively in certain circumstances and significantly less effectively in other situations. Maybe you have to have two models, one for predicting in one particular area and one for predicting in a different area. In fact, maybe you need a model ahead of both of those that classifies those two problems so that you can then use one for predictions in, in situation A and then use another for predictions in situation B. So, And then even as far as deployment, you might have to come back and start this process over again. So this process involves a lot of different activities of we, as we've kind of looked at before, the collection of data. You know, if you if you went through the process of finding pictures of dogs and lizards to, to identify the differences there, you have to collect all of that data and then you have to label that data. So for a situation where we have 20 images, that's not too crazy, but you know, it can be time consuming to manage all of this data. You have that process of data cleaning and transformation. And you know, we didn't even look at, are the images the right size? Are they right, the right detail? Maybe we can get better results from higher resolution resolution images. Maybe we can get better results from lower resolution images. Maybe if all the images are consistent in size, maybe we get different results that way. Um, so then you have to think about developing the models and training the models. You know, what kind of uh, what kind of models are we using? What kind of training data are we using? How do we host those models? So, um, you know, once we have the model, is the model something we can just export and put in uh, in line with the rest of our application? Or do we want to have a completely separate service for hosting that model? And that can get very interesting because maybe your model requires a lot of resources to operate. Maybe your entire application doesn't scale the same way as your model. Maybe there are thousands of operations that are necessary for your application that don't involve your model at all, and you want to have that scale differently than the actual predictions that you're working with. Maybe your model works best with some type of particular hardware. You know, maybe you have to think about uh, GPUs or TPUs in order to host that effectively. And then the whole process of analyzing and evaluating and refining and monitoring your model, because you know, even if your model is operating effectively, is it scaling with the, the necessary load? Uh, is that service working okay? But is your model still giving good predictions? Because uh, you know your model may be trained with a certain set of data, but the data in the world around you may change as well. So if we think about applications that use machine learning, uh, you know, there's some questions we should really think about. You know, like if you use an application that uses machine learning, and a lot of applications nowadays do, from really, really sophisticated capabilities to really pedestrian things as well. I mean, if you look at, you open up the Amazon.com webpage, there are going to be product suggestions there, and you know. 
that's probably some level of machine learning that's running in some kind, some kind of process that is uh, making recommendations for everybody in a particular profile. So, um, you know, I don't have the details of how that operates, but I'm willing to guess that there is a process there. So uh, what data for any application, what data is necessary for that particular kind of training? And who is the user? And I think that this is an important question because building a model for your own purposes is different than building a model that you know is gonna be mostly used by some particular application sending predictions to it. So what does that model have to do and what kind of predictions are important for the rest of the application? This is really an exercise in thinking about the context of the model and how that operates within the rest of the application. So what does your application do? What's the purpose of the, the thing that you're building because the thing you're building is not the model the model is just part of the rest of what you're building uh, how often does the data change and how could this affect the model's performance so if you're building something that you know is trying to forecast uh, inventory needs for uh, shopping you know at a, at a retailer um, your model is taking all of the data and making a forecast but there's a lot of pieces around that you know like how do we provide the right inputs and how do we collect those those are going to be the job of the application um how does often does the data change well something like shopping is going to be very seasonal so you may have to change that frequently you may have to train that on different segments of data you may actually need different models or different um different types of performance based on the year. Uh, you know, every year at the holiday season, the shopping season is very different, you know, than it is in say the middle of July. Uh, so, you know, how this, this affects your model and how this affects your application and what your application does is really important to consider. How does all of this affect your model's performance? So it's, it's good to think about, you know, not only what model do I need and how do I train that model and what kind of predictions does it give me, but how does that operate in the context of an application that's going to need to collect data, maybe retrieve other data, you know, like you don't always want to be giving your model user inputs. Sometimes there are other inputs that you want to re retrieve. So um, it could be that you know one thing that your user does provides an input for the model, but maybe that that input is uh, is enhanced with you know other records or other bits of data that can then be used to provide a better prediction based on other materials. So what's the API that you're going to have to your prediction service versus what's the API that you're going to have to your application? And are those the same thing? Uh, you know, these are all considerations when we're building machine learning driven applications. So one thing that we can do is evaluate the different machine learning uh, approaches, like what's out there? What, what kinds of models do we have available? Do we, can we use a pre-trained model? Um, can we use a off-the-shelf model? Do we need to train something from scratch? And I think that these are all different ways we need to think about how we approach uh, our, our model development. We have to find data because even if we use something like, uh, if we want to try to use transfer learning and take something that's already trained, we might need data for our specific application. Uh, this number three should be initial training and evaluation, but I don't I don't catch all of my L's. So uh, initial training and evaluation. So we train it once, maybe we train it and just see how that goes. Train it with a little bit of data, train it with a, train it with a sample of data. It's common with tabular data to pick a random sample, train and then just try to evaluate how, like do we even have something in the right, right direction? Do we have predictions that makes any sense at all? Is there any type of trend in this data that the machine can pick up on? Uh, or are we getting something that just seems to be nonsense? So then we have to think again about what kind of approaches we're using and what kind of data, what kind of inputs we have and whether or not we need to engineer features more effectively. Uh, we want to identify the users for uh, for what our application is going to be, and we need to consider for this application what are our machine learning needs and what is the context, because that's going to be a very different type of application. You know, um, I think that there are applications that are very timely. I think at one point I saw an, a, a suggestion for an application that would predict whether or not you can find a parking space on a particular street. So the the context there is very different than if I'm sitting behind my computer, uh, you know, viewing charts and graphs. If I'm on a on a street and I need to see if there's parking, I'm probably going to want to do something on my phone. I'm probably going to want to open it up and it should tell me where I am. You know, it should automatically detect my location and make a prediction for that right there because I'm not really in the space where I can think and plan and really use the application to its fullest. I probably need a really simple application in that situation. So that application is now going to have the job of collecting that data as much as possible and then giving me a prediction that may be valuable. Um, so this like how the context of your application works and how the context of your predictions work may not necessarily be the same thing. Um, your application may need to, to find data, generate data, aggregate data, or do something before you even get to the machine learning part of it. Uh, you have to train your model so that it has the, the all of the data that you've, that you've curated, all of the data that you've engineered now to, to be appropriate for your inputs. You have to train the model. You have to build an application that supports all of this and you have to deploy your machine learning model uh, 
either within the application or hosted somewhere, some other means of, of, of managing this entire application architecture. So all of these are important considerations when we're thinking about how we're going to develop applications that leverage machine learning. So this is a basic overview. This will lead us into some other activities like um, what does this machine learning uh, development process look like and how do we evaluate whether a model is effective? Um, how can we compare models? And we'll get into all of that in, in future lessons in the course. Thank you for watching.